The next dives of the robot Victor will be entirely dedicated to the in-depth study of the deep muscles way of life. Whereas Vermicari shrimp are only to be found at depths of more than 2,000 meters, deep mussels are present wherever there are hot geysers. The lucky strike deep mussels are harvested at depths of less than 2,000 meters and stand up well to the decompression. The scientists can simply transport them in plexiglass boxes. What's most striking when you open a deep muscle is the sheer size of its gills. In this muscle, we found bacteria in the gills, and in great abundance, too. There are no bacterial filaments visible on the outside, though. Unlike with the Rimikari shrimp, the deep muscle bacteria live right inside the cells of the gills, a very rare phenomenon. The cells on the surface of the thousands of little filaments that make up each gill have the specific task of growing internal bacteria. It's quite clear when seen through a fluorescent microscope, the nucleus of the cell is blue. The hundreds of little red and green blobs are all bacteria comfortably lodged right inside each specialized cell. So the bacteria pull off the amazing feat of foiling the cell's immune systems to get inside them and, once in, to stay there. The animal has to be able to regulate the rate of growth of the bacteria within its own cells. In certain types of cells, the bacteria are allowed, even encouraged, to develop. Whereas in all the other tissues, there are no symbiotic bacteria to be found at all. But the mussels don't merely accept the presence of the bacteria. They make sure that their guests can eat their fill. Mussels are, in fact, like filters. They circulate water through their gills. There's oxygen in this water as well as sulfurs, a bit of methane, and a bit of dissolved carbon. So everything the bacteria need is there. And since the water is circulating, their environment is constantly being refreshed. This relationship between the bacteria and the muscles is most peculiar. It's as if, after millions of years of an intimate relationship, the bacteria were progressively becoming part of the very cells of the muscle. To measure to what extent the deep muscles are dependent on the bacteria in the cells of their gills, the scientists at Biobaz are going to try a little experiment 1,700 meters under the sea. It consists of putting a few dozen mussels in cages at a distance from the source of the fluids. When we take them out of their natural habitat, the bacteria get no more sulfurs, no more methane, so they have nothing to live on. Away from the fluids, the bacteria cease to multiply and eventually disappear. And without their crop of bacteria, the mussels only survive for two or three days. 
What is the reason for this fundamental dependence? The gills are like their larder, where they grow their bacteria. Astonishing as it may seem, each of these specialized cells is constantly digesting within itself a small part of its personal stock of bacteria. We also think the bacteria are capable of releasing compounds. For example, as a bacteria grows up, it will release sugars around it, within the cell of the animal. By way of the blood circulation, molecules from the intracellular bacteria in the gills actually feed all the muscle's cells. So it's an especially close symbiosis between animal and bacteria. And it's the reason these deep muscles have done so well in such extreme conditions. An intracellular symbiosis like this is a very rare phenomenon in biology. It's an extremely important discovery, since it demonstrates the fundamental role that bacteria have played in the most important phases of evolution. As long as two billion years ago, a symbiotic fusion of two bacteria in a process resembling that of intracellular symbiosis was possibly at the origin of the first cell with a nucleus. Soon after that, the incorporation of a bacteria enabled cells with nuclei to breathe oxygen and evolve ever more complex organisms, all the way up to mammals and to the human species. A few hundred million years later, it was once again symbiosis with the bacteria that would allow cells to photosynthesize and enable algae and all the Earth's vegetation to evolve. So two of the most easily recognizable characteristics of plants and animals come from bacteria, that they breathe, or in the case of plants, photosynthesize. These both originate from symbiosis with bacteria. These huge populations of symbiotic muscles became an important food source for other animals coming from the surface. This third type of animal was neither a grazer nor symbiotic. They were predators, scavengers, and bottom feeders. They may be the spitting image of their cousins at the surface, but these carnivores have adapted so well to the extreme physical and chemical conditions here that they have become species specific to the deep sea geysers. Take the Mirokari shrimp, for instance, a distant cousin of the Rimikaris with its huge head, or the Segenzasia crab, both of them scavengers and bottom feeders. These native species spend their whole lives around the sources of volcanic fluids and are perfectly happy here. <laughs> 